Hi everybody, I'm Steffi from The Makers and you're here today hopefully to learn how to needle felt a heart and um, it's gonna be something like this. I will make one of these together uh, maybe with you if you've chosen to needle felt along because um, obviously you saw in the description what you need to make one of these. It's actually quite quite very little to make one of these and um, they might double up as a nice Christmas decoration or maybe you can, um, I don't know, today is International Gift Day so maybe you can make one of these to give as a gift um, to a loved one or a friend and also of course Valentine's Day creeps up sooner than you um, think but other than that I think they're a really lovely decoration seasonal or not and if you've never needle felt it before then that's great you're in the right place because I'm going to talk as if you are completely oblivious to anything needle felted I'll just show you um, the other um, two hearts here so if you um, if you're new to needle felting then the first thing that you need definitely is a is a felting needle and um, it looks a little bit like this now I know that um, on in uh, while you're watching this you can obviously ask questions and leave comments so please feel free to do this um, I have actually got my colleague Emma who is um, on on the other side so so to speak and she will be trying to um, answer as many questions as you can but I will go slowly in this as well and remember, it will stay here on the Facebook uh, page um, as well um, of the Virtual uh, Village Hall. And so you can revisit it anytime. And um, as I said, you need something like this. This is a specialist needle. Lots of people don't ever uh, realize that you need a specialist needle. They just imagine, oh, how, how can you stab a needle into wool and it all sort of shapes and sculpts and you're in charge of it. Um, you do need a specialist needle. Now, what's special about this is that the part from here to there is the working part. So if I run my finger from the tip to the fatter bit here, it sort of gets stuck. And that is because there are notches in that needle. And uh, these notches are responsible for tangling up the wool. As you stab it into the wool, it tangles up the wool and it makes it tighter and tighter. So you imagine the fibers are really loose and as you stab into it, they become knotted and tighter and knitted together and until they're so tight that you can't pull them apart anymore. And in the process, the whole um, shape will shrink. Um, I'm saying hello to everybody who's watching. I probably won't be able to um, see all the comments that you're leaving but as I said my colleague Emma is on the other side and she will she will be there to um to help you if you've got any questions or if some some of the things are unclear. I've actually needle felted for 15 years and every day is getting better. I am so in love with needle felting. I have been from the a minute ago and that's something that you might find about needle felting it can be a little bit addictive so that's one of the warnings I will be issuing of course you're also using a sharp needle so be mindful of this um, it's mainly to do with age and paying attention whilst you're needle felting rather than doing something else and then you take your eye off and you accidentally stab yourself so um, be mindful of that now if you want to understand the felting process itself you just have to remember any time when you have been putting your favorite woolly jumper into the hot wash and it came out really shrunk and matted and it doesn't fit anymore and it feels really stiff that's exactly what I'm going to do in a minute with a needle and some fluffy wool and for this I've actually got a pack here that makes three hearts um, and I've got the ribbon to go with it as well um, there are no tools in there but um, I have got the tools at the ready and um, it's this much wool makes this much hearts basically. So you can see that a lot of fluffy wool can um, reduces a lot in size and it makes a much smaller heart. Now I've also got instructions here and what I'm always mindful is that with needle felting you can get to the same result in many ways. So but I'm going to stick to my own instructions because otherwise if you watch this again and you're looking at the instructions at any point you might think oh this is not what it says on there so I'm being very mindful to do this. Now I've got a really bright red here, I've got uh, one with um, shimmer, it's like a shimmer red, it's got sparkly fibers running through it and a nice sort of deep red um, uh, wool and I'm just going to pick the one with the shimmer because today is the kind of sparkly day, I feel a bit sparkly today. So a good uh, practice whenever you needle felting is to take a, a pinch of wool 
off um, and put it to one side because you never know when you might need it, especially if you're using up all your bulk. And just to remind you, to make this heart, you need 15 grams of red wool bats. Now, bats is what this is. This is what bats look like. Um, this is not the flying kind, okay? This has come from sheep. It is sheep wool, and it's spelled B-A-T-T-S. Um, it's just the way it has been processed. Now, bats is great for 3D needle felting um, and for shaping. You might also know wool tops, and they're like a long strand of wool and we we love them too but we love them mainly for surface decoration or if you're into spinning you love those or if you're wet felting then you love those too we we needle felters we love wool bats because they shape really easily and you don't have to put a polystyrene shape or anything like that in it because let's face it we're trying to cut down the plastic on the planet so um, I have also got a felting mat, which frankly you don't necessarily need for the heart because you can hold it in your hand unless you feel a little bit nervous because obviously if you've got a felting mat to rest the heart on, then your fingers won't be less um in, will be less in the way. Now I'm using um, an earth friendly felting mat because it's 100% wool top. Again, we're trying to be environmentally um, friendly, but I will hold this up most of the time so that you can see what I'm doing. So first of all, I need to roll my shape up. And when I say roll it up, we mean usually fold in the shape on itself. So imagine you've got, um, you, you want to get as many wraps um, around what you started out here, that that start. And um, to do this, you're going to have to tease the fibers out a little bit. So every time you sort of roll it and fold the sides in because you're aiming for uh, not quite a round shape, more of an oblong shape, tease these fibers out because the wispier they are at the end, the easier than um, to felt down. So I'm rolling this out and I'm, I've got um, the last wispy fiber sticking out here. If I pull them any more, then I'll just pull them off. So I'm not going to do that. But until I get to the very last wispy bits, they are just here. I'm now going to use my felting needle there. And I'm going to stab into these wispy fibers um, so that they are basically just getting fused or, or tangled up inside the main shape that I've rolled up. And it is magic. If you've never needle felted before, it feels like magic when you stab the needle it also makes an extremely um satisfying crunching noise so um lots of people say it's therapeutic because it's repetitive and um and all i'm doing basically i've just stabbed these wispy fibers into the heart shape so now i'm going to look at this and where i've stopped already i'll see sort of the light slightest um hint of a dent so i'm going to make that the top and now i need to work on shaping these two sides up. So if this was a lump of clay, you wouldn't think twice about it. You would just literally do this and that and then make a, a dent in the top. As it's wool, wherever you put your hands, wherever you want to apply the pressure, that is where you need a needle felt. So I'm going to turn the heart upside down now, or what will be the heart, and I'm going to stab into these sides that I want to um, make sort of more diagonally upward. Um, bearing in mind the heart is on his um, upside down at the moment and you have to remember wherever you stab the needle is where the reduction takes place because you're tangling up the fibers by stabbing the needle into the wool and you can just about sort of see how the wool resp responds to this and uh, when you're doing a 3D shape you have to be mindful to always stab it all around if you lay this flat on your mat which you can, of course, as well. And you're just only ever stabbing from the top. You're going to make a flat heart. Um, but there's nothing wrong with it if you want a flat heart. And so I'm going to stab the needle all around to m try and keep it nice and round. And <clears throat> and so you, you need to use your eyes a little bit to see where the wool needs to be stabbed in to make that heart shape. But at the moment, I'm mainly concentrating on making this come up. And then I've got the other side to do. So I'm going to change over to the other side now, also turned it upside down again. With needle felting, it's it's a very different craft to most crafts because you never just work on one part and then it's done. You're continuously going back over what you've already worked on. So it would be, if I made an analogy to knitting a jumper, it would be a bit like knitting a bit of the front, knitting a bit of the sleeve, knitting a bit of the back, then knitting a bit of the sleeve, then knitting a bit... Uh, um, around um, the hem then knitting a little bit around the collar so that that is what needle felting is like you're you're always coming back to an area that you've already worked 
worked on, which um, the advantage for that is that you're constantly correcting what you're making. So you don't have to uh, think, oh, now this is it. I've messed it up. Quite the opposite. You always have a chance to um, to re um, adjust or to compensate um, for what you've done earlier. You can always re revisit the area. Now, often the question that is asked, how much and how long do I need to start this? Okay, if you're a perfectionist, you will love this because you can stub this forever and ever and ever until it's so solid that your needle doesn't fit in there anymore. If you are um, an impatient crafter like me, you love it too because you can actually get away with it staying quite soft and fluffy. I mean, this is almost a heart shape. So um, I have worked on these two sides at the moment and now I'm going to make this point here. For this, it might work better to have a, a felting mat because what you do is, I'm holding this up, obviously you wouldn't do this at home, you leave it lying on the table. It's just that you can sort of work a little bit more vigorous on on making that, um, that um, pointy bit at the bottom. Now, a question that also gets often asked is how deep do you stub your needle in? Now, I'm holding my needle like this. So where my middle finger is, is where the, the working part of the needle starts. But it doesn't mean to say that you can't go really deep into um, the shape. And um, the, the difference is that if you only stub the needle superficially, then you're only fastening or um, tangling up the fibers or making the fibers firmer very superficially. It's a little bit like... Um, a chocolate brownie that's really crusty on the top and gooey inside. So this is if you only stub the needle superficially. If you stub the needle all the way in, then you're making the inside firmer as well. So if you're trying to reduce the shape, if you're trying to reduce the size, then do stub really deep into your shape. That's just another tip that I can um, pass on to you. Um, once you know how to make a shape like this, um, the whole needle felting world has opened up to you because you can make several shapes and put them together. So, for example, like the um, the polar bear, you can see here at the back, it's just lots of shapes needle felted together. We do lots of free tutorials on our YouTube channel. So if you if you take two needle felting, then you're very welcome to um, join <clears throat> our YouTube channel. YouTube channel. It's the makers with two S's and there's a reason for it. I'm one of the S's and Sophie, who is uh, the co-founder of the business, is the other S. But we are we have grown um, quite substantially over the last five years, mostly because um, needle felting has become so popular and we love it so much that we just want to spread the needle felting love in a heart shape. So you might have seen me that I'm already giving my heart that dent. If you go in a consistent line, just stabbing the needle in, this is what happens. And this is a beautiful way to demonstrate what actually happens when you stub your needle. Now, we'll just say a little bit about the stabbing movement. If you're a beginner needle felter, what often happens is that people overcomplicate. They think it can't be as simple as just stabbing a needle, even though it is. And so they, they sort of sometimes they poke it or they pull, try and pull things out. You're not pulling anything out. You're pushing things in. in. And um, if you put any stress on that needle, so say you're doing this in a curved way, then um, then basically you're just bending the needle and then it will break. So going in in and out in a straight line, I'm not even my wrist stay stiff, um, is the way to do it. And then when you um, get close to your desired shape, you're just going to stab it all over because that is the bit that maybe a perfectionist at some point needs to be told to stop stabbing because you can make this so nice and neat. If you are a perfectionist and you like making things nice and neat and solid and you want to really, really perfect it, then what I'm using at the moment is a medium needle. There is a reason why there are different needle sizes, and that is because um, the, the tighter you needle felt it, the less likely can fit a large needle into it. By the way, these needles are measured according to the wire gauge. So if you're stabbing a needle into this um, and you want to know the size, what it is, you could measure it yourself with a wire gauge, but the one that I'm using right now is a 38. And if you want to go down, we also do a 40, which is the higher number, but it's actually a finer needle, and also a 42. And um, the 40 and the 42 will allow you to really refine 
the um, surface but also if you've made it really small and compact then that will um, allow you to finish it off in the in the firmest way you possibly can so you you can see I'm just working all around the heart stabbing it um, to make sure that it's symmetric and see this side is a bit blunter than this one is a bit more pointy so I'm going to stab this down a little bit now if you're wondering why I've kept a bit of extra wool one of the things that can happen is that if you're making a shape, can you see this here? You can get um, cracks or you can get a, a little hole even. If I sort of emphasize this, look, there's a hole there. The great thing about needle threading is you can cover up cracks. I wish it would work with humans. Anyway, there's your um, spare wool you put to one side. Well, a little bit of it anyway. And all you need to do is take a dusting of this, like a really a small amount, lay it over the area that you don't like so much. So you're not building bulk. You're actually just covering up an area that um, you're not so keen on. And then you just stab the wispy ends in on the side to um, fasten them in. And then once that's fastened in, you can stab over the top um, of what, what you've put on there and um, felt obviously all the fibers down into place where, you, um, where you've laid the wool out and the hole will magically disappear. If it's a giant hole, then you might have to um, fill it in a little bit more like with polyfiller, but you're using wool, don't use polyfiller, it won't work. And, um, and then um, if you want to change the shape and you want to make it slightly more pointy, then you can just literally felt where you would be pushing um, the needle so that you can make you can still work lots on the shape as long as there's air in it as long as you can squish it you can manipulate the shape um, and you can sculpt the wool with your needle now I want to show you also if you want to make a little um, add a little surface um, detail onto it then you can uh, use a contrasting wool which I have got here it was in, in that pack um, and um, I'm, I've got white here so um, what I'm trying to show you is to make an, a separate little shape. It doesn't have to be a heart. You can make spots, stripes, letters, anything you like. In fact, on here, um, I think on the instructions, we sort of started spelling love. So that, um, you can make a, you can spell a name on there, anything you like. Um, and to do this, you're literally painting with wool. So you've got your wool. There's a golden rule in, um, in needle felting, and that is called... Um, Less is always more. OK, so when you're thinking of using felting wool to add something onto it, always use less than you think you need to because you can always add more. But if you pile it on, then your your needle will struggle to work it. And, and also um, you can't take it off that easily. So I'm, I want to make a heart shape on, to, on top of my heart. So I'm teasing this wool out. So I've got a nice um, small amount, even smaller than what I took off. And then you can pre-shape this by twizzling it between your fingers. So you're making a strand of wool that looks a little bit neater than the fluffy, fluffy, um, wispy parts. All of this wool is unfelted. So you're actually felting it by stabbing the needle into it. And, um, and then you can add the detail onto there. And all you need to do is you start out, give it one, one anchor point, so to speak. So you're stabbing the needle in and you're, you're literally fastening that a strand of wool onto it and then you're shaping it in the way that you want it to um, appear on your heart and I'm trying to do this uh, by not even looking at it um, and then you're stabbing into that shape as you are as you're fastening the wool on as you want that shape to emerge you're stabbing it on um, so this part is now loose and the rest has been stabbed on and then you obviously uh, go back up I have to just look at that that way. Sorry, I just got to put this down and get a little bit more done before I uh, can um, show it to you again. So I've just made that um, little um, um, turn here at the base and then you can work your way round again and then close the heart up here at the top. If you haven't got enough wool, as in the, the strand isn't long enough, then you can just um, add a little bit more. Um, and I've just got to look at that again because let's make this um, a bit neater. So I'm coming, I'm going at the moment, I'm stabbing there. So I've got it um, almost stabbed on, but now I want to tidy it up. So I'm going to stab into this. 
to um to make it look neater so the more you stub into it the more of the white wool will disappear because you're stubbing it into the heart and guess what the other thing is that happens you will also make an indentation on that part of the heart and so this is what i meant earlier that you're const constantly compensating for wherever you're working so you need you need to stub all around that area that you've just stubbed into as well and um my heart's a bit wonky here so if you don't like that, you can always pull it off and, and put it right. Um, but it's not as bad as um, as I first imagined it was going to be. Um, if you like the 2D needle felting, then that is possible too. You can make pictures, you can needle felt onto um, all kinds of fabrics. You can needle felt onto felt, tweed, cotton, anything that takes the needle. But you will need... Um, a needle felting mat for this you can't just do this sort of suspended in the air like I've just done here with a heart and um, <clears throat> if you like um, doing things around wire you might have heard of using wire armature to make a needle felted shapes I just happen to have here a donkey and uh, this donkey is needle felted but he's got posable legs because um, there is a, a, a wire inside so that's another these are the three types of needle felting that we often talk about one is uh, 3d shaping like the heart you can make colorful hearts hang them up in a in a garland Ooh, one upside down um, you can that's all the shaping with wool 3d you can flat needle felt and you can also use wire um, armature inside and um, there are loads and loads of different projects that you can do if you get hooked onto this I'm I'm telling you now the world is opening up to something completely new you will love it like I say 15 years later and I every day I discover something new absolutely love it and we are here to support you we're 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 very very proud to say that we are an extremely um customer friendly and supportive business for us this isn't just transactional it's very personal so we want you to succeed and we want you to share what you have made so this is the heart from the other side it still feels quite fluffy and i can add more things to it um if you want to hang the heart up like with um with a little ribbon then um, you can sew that straight onto the top. If you have got something like that, um, which it does come in this in this heart pack, you get a string like a rainbow um, string made from um, natural fiber. It's a jute fiber. You can you can literally string the um, the strand onto your needle and just go through the heart because it's nice and soft. And um, if you have any questions right now, then pop them into the comments. Um, or if you have questions in the future, you can certainly get in touch with us. We are the makers with two S's. I think the back couldn't be plastered more um, if, you, if you need to come and join us. And maybe we can do another uh, live stream here on Facebook as well. Um, tell your friends about it if they want to see the magic unfold. I've actually written um, two... Uh, books on needle felting one together with my um friend and colleague um sophie and um and and they are very very popular because they're literally like a little needle felting bible so um you can have a look at that as well and in terms of time well we've got eight minutes left how quick is that i'm just gonna make another heart how about that right i'm gonna use um this i'll give you some more tips so if you have if you need to roll this up like I did earlier and you happen to have um, little bits that just come off, we need to put a little bit to one side anyway. But if you've got other bits that just come off, um, then instead of laying them side by side, broaden out the largest part you have got and then lay them on top of each other. So you need to start out with quite a flat um, batch of wool. I didn't have to do that earlier because the, it was all in one piece. And then, as I did before, you just roll it into a, sort of an oblong shape. The tighter you roll this, the less needle felting you've got to do, but the smaller the shape will start out with. So um, you will find your own um, best way. One of the lovely things about needle felting is also we now see people's creations and we can, without knowing who's done it, we can tell who's done it because they just, you you develop your sort of your own signature almost on, on, on needle felting. So I get to the end of my wispy fibers there and I'm going to stub them down into the main shape I've just rolled up. Mind your fingers and now my shape has magically fused together 
and now I can work on the shaping. So if I have a look at it first, last time I used the top where I felt it down as the top, but actually on here I feel like this could be better for putting the dent in the top. And um, and then you just um, work, first of all, on the sides. So I've turned my heart upside down. Not that you can tell yet it's a heart, but it will become one in no time. It is it is magic. It really is magic, needle felting. And most people who take to it, they just absolutely love it straight away because it's so forgiving. And um, lots of people have said, I've never been able, This is this is not me saying it, but the feedback we get from people, they have tried all kinds of crafts and they've kind of given up that they have got any creativity in them. I have an um, opinion about this. I think everybody is creative. We've just somehow um, on the way of becoming adults, somehow we've been persuaded we are not, but everybody is. And um, But a lot of people who've tried knitting and crocheting and sewing, um, they take to needle felting because it's just the simplest craft to learn. And all you need to do is build your confidence by stabbing a needle. How easy is that? It can be easily transported. You don't have to take out um, lots of things to be able to do the needle felting. You can just have a little tub, have your project in there, take it out as and when you need it, and then put it away when you, um, you know, keep your needles safe. So make sure that it, they don't get in the wrong hands, but then that's the same with uh, sewing needles or pins. And, um, and then if you need to um, need a little bit of stabbing time, take it out, sit down, get your 10 minutes of stabbing in, and then you can put it away again. You can scale things up and down. It's another great thing about needle felting. You can actually, if you decide to make this heart three times as big, you just use um, more wool. You don't need to use three times as much wool. It doesn't work like that. But you, you, you get the gist because you can build layers on if you want to make the heart bigger. Look, I've made another one. It's as fast as that. Just needs a little bit of working on. You can have different tools. I'm just gonna grab. If you don't like the idea of holding a single needle, you can get needle felting tools. This one is our favorite, our three needle felting tool. In fact, I've, I've actually only loaded it up with two needles. So um, if you've got a question, do you have to throw away when the needles break? No, you don't. You can also just load it up with one needle and, um, and that's fine too. So there are um, lots of things that you might need to adapt to make it more suitable for you. So you could have um, a needle felting tool if, if this needle, let's face it, it's hardly hand friendly. But that is because it actually sits in industrial needle felting machines where there's thousands of them going up and down on, on, on loose fiber and they're turning it into felt. And it doesn't have to be wool. This can also be man-made fiber that can be turned into felt. The, everybody knows a tennis ball. The cover of a tennis ball has been stabbed by these needles thousands of times. So that is just one example of, um, of a, um, a particular uh, fabric that was created with these felting needles. It's, it's a relative modern craft, um, basically because the felting needles obviously weren't invented, invented until the industrialization. So um, everything, what I love about it being modern is that everything's possible. There are no stigmas. Nobody said, oh, you can't do this. I mean, I, I'm a great believer that craft is completely free anyway. Nobody should be saying, oh, you can't do that. You, you're allowed anything because let's face it, there is no craft police. Nobody's going to come knocking on your window and say, excuse me, you're not allowed to use this needle on or this wool or to use this with that. So, um, but needle felting is particularly free. So there, ha there are so many op opportunities still and, and um, yeah, lots, lots of um, scope to, as I say, put your own signature onto it and come up with your own ideas. Or if you just want to be told what to do, just follow the instruction from beginning to the end and you'll be absolutely fine. We do sell lots of kits and um, all kinds of things to get you started. But um, you have got the, um, the in the description of all, all you need to make a heart like this. It's just 15 grams of, um, of wool bats. Remember wool bats, don't go for wool tops. It will be so much harder to do it. And then you just need a medium needle um, and... Um, and if, if, if you don't feel confident holding this in your hand as I'm doing it, then um, get yourself a felting mat and, um, and you're in business already. And then a ribbon, maybe you've got one kicking around at home. Um, and, um, and that's basically it. So I've made a second heart quite quickly. And um, we're getting to the end of this tutorial. If you want to see more, pop onto our um, YouTube channel, The Makers, with two S's. We also have a Facebook presence. 
So feel free to um, follow up on that. And if you are making a heart, share it with us because today is International Gift Day. So even if it's just a photo, it would be lovely um, to see this photo. So this is this is made from the same wool and you can see that this heart is slightly different from this one. And that's another amazing thing about needle felting is that you're not making carbon copies. And that's great because there's no pressure on you to have to exactly make it as it looks. You can make your own shape and it will look absolutely beautiful. Well, I thank you very much for taking the time to um, to watch me. I hope um, that you enjoyed this and um, be lovely to hear um, from you. You can leave feedback here as well so that we, we know what we need to do differently or better next time. And um, I'm hoping that you've found the heart for needle felting and it's pumping excitedly to get you started because that's how I started and I'm still here 15 years later and it's getting better and better. So thank you very much for um, your time and I will see you hopefully very soon. Bye bye, take care everybody.